Dollar Shave Club is a nine-figure brand that has been acquired by Unilever in 2016 for $1 billion, but yet I could find many things on their website that could be speed tested to improve user experience and increase their conversions. I will first look at the homepage on mobile, obviously, because that's where everyone's getting most of their traffic nowadays. And I'll be looking at my pages, so the home page, collection page, product page, navigation, and cart. So on the home page, the first thing that I would say here is if you look at their header, it's taking quite some space. It's probably about 80 to 90 pixels, which is a lot more than most nine-figure brands nowadays. If you look at, for example, Tira Body or Princess Polly, Skims, they all have very optimized header that is probably taking only 40 pixels or something like this. On desktop, it doesn't matter that much, but on mobile, it's basically pushing everything down the fold. So um, that would be a first thing that would speed test is the size of the header, because obviously the header is visible on all pages, so that would be maximizing the potential of impact that this test would have. Then the search icon creates an extra step. When you click on the search icon, it's basically opening a new page, as you can see here, slash search. And this is creating unnecessary friction uh, because they could, just like many other nine-figure brands' websites, uh, let's say, for example, Tira Body, we're staying on the same page. It's just opening the search uh, pop-up in a way. With Princess Polly, it's the same thing. And as you can see, all of those brands, they have highly optimized search bar. As you can see, like we have, we have the most popular products, uh, we have quick links, we have the search bar. Here it's the same for Princess Polly, it's the same with Kim's and we are always staying in the page where we're at. It's not opening a new page. So this search icon opening a new page is just completely unnecessary and it should be removed. And instead, when you click on the search, you should be able to see what are the best products, uh, which is probably those. You should be able to see uh, quick links to the collections and obviously uh, the page shouldn't refresh because obviously this will create frictions. Then like of value prop and offer on the hero section. If you're new to the brand and you land on the homepage, you don't really understand what exactly they're doing. Like welcome to the summer club, this is highly generic. If you know the brand, then you understand that this is part of their branding and their uh, vibe. But if you don't know anything about them, then how can you understand their value proposition? Their products are not even visible. Uh, you can see smarter shades, smarter summer, but again, this is highly generic. It doesn't tell us anything about the value proposition. And again, there is no offer. Like we, we see summer, but summer then what? Like do we get, do we get twenty percent off if we join for summer? Is there special pricing? It's just too generic. I think the name of the brand gives you a hint that obviously it is selling products for shaving. But apart from that, we don't see anything on the hero that is telling us anything about the value proposition. Uh, then what's good here is that we have three clear USPs. Orders are shipping free over $18, uh, club pricing, no membership fees, and 30-day money-back guarantee. But there should be something on the, on the hero letting us know about what the products are. And then when you scroll down a little bit, you can see in a more detailed way uh, what makes the brand different. I'm just thinking, why are those not communicated directly on the hero section, but because you know that 100% of the people will see the hero section, but from there, we have already lost maybe 30% of the people. Another thing that shocks me when I look at this website is that product discovery is not really encouraged. We have the navigation, we have the CTA, but then we don't see any bestsellers, we don't see any collections directly on the page. And this is a mistake because obviously it's lowering um, the product discovery rate. If we look at Terra Body, for example, we can see directly the offer, boom, the fastest day sell. We have a clear offer and then we can see the products right below. Same with Princess Polly. You can see uh, Bogo 50, so we understand the clear offer and we have directly the categories and the best sellers. Skims is probably the same. Uh, we have the new products in and then we can see directly the collections. On Dollar Shave Club, we don't see directly the product, so you have to scroll down a little bit and then you see those cards. But as you can see, we've scrolled already maybe 20 or 
that means we probably lost already 30-40% of the traffic. So that's something that should be definitely split tested and see if it actually increased product discovery rate. Then another thing that I found a bit weird on the homepage is that we have those cards here so we can finally see the products, our six blades for $10 and our four blades for $8.50. Uh, the thing here is that you cannot click anywhere. You cannot click on the title, you cannot click on those use cases, you cannot click on the image. The only place you can click on is buy for $10, which is not that visible with all the rest. There's a bit of color blindness because it's uh, black text on white background, just like the other, the other text. And so what I would do here is just make this entire card clickable so that all the people, and I can tell you there will be a lot of people clicking on those areas, they will not get frustrated, like it will directly send them to the product page. Same with this one. So yeah, I would make this product card clickable and maybe I would split this, those cards higher on the page to increase product discovery rate. Then I felt that the press mentions, which is here, and the reviews are very poorly selected. When you showcase reviews on your website, you want to very strategically select those reviews. You want them to basically enter your customer's um, inner conversation and address their main concerns, uh, talk about their pain points. But here we just have best blades bar none. The blades give you a close, smooth shave even after many uses. Highly recommend. Uh, this this one could be good, but I've been using this since the beginning, taking breaks to try other new razor companies, and I still always come back to Dolok Shaper. Doesn't tell me much why the brand's better. This is very very generic. Could be ChatGPT wrote this. It's it's not personal at all. Um, so this is for the review section. I don't think it's very good. Could be highly optimized, and then for the press mentions. There have been recently features in Men's House, GQ, but what did those press said about themselves? Like what I would do differently is maybe a carousel and we see maybe the logo of the press and then we can see like a small quote telling what the press said about this brand, what makes it unique compared to other brands. I feel like this is a bit too generic and like everyone is doing this. So if you're using press mentions, at least do it right. All right, then I want to have a look at the navigation menu. I feel like the text is very, very big. It looks like 2010 websites, uh, which I guess maybe is good for their audience. Uh, and I'm guessing this is something they've split tested. I hope for them. Uh, but then something I don't really like here is that there is an extra step. Um, and just before I show you that, just want to show you the difference of size. And you can check on your mobile. You will see like just for forward, taking the entire screen means that the text is really, really big. Because if you check most brands, um, it's always pretty, pretty optimized. And, and contrarily to what we think, when the text is a bit smaller, it's actually easier to read. Because like when it's taking the entire screen like this, uh, and I mean, there, there are not too many words, but I would definitely make it smaller. Uh, for branding and then what I would do here is remove this extra step like the mega menu and instead I would separate the the collection page from all the links and the other links I would put them at the bottom as secondary links secondary in terms of importance uh, because normally you need to do the education before people land on your website with your ads, with listicles, with articles in the press, but when they land on the website, basically they wanna, they wanna buy, they wanna shop. And so you need to orient them in the best way possible. Again, if you look at all the brands, directly, like all those nine figure brands, in the navigation menu, it's all centered around collection page and setting and products. So, you need to educate before, but when they land on the website, and that doesn't mean you cannot use uh, education sections on the website, again, strategically uh, selected and positioned, but the navigation menu is just the place on the website where people are trying to navigate and find the exact product they're looking for. So I would remove this extra step of having to click on this arrow, and instead maybe put best errors, new arrivals, uh, men, 
it seems that they're pushing hard on the on the club so maybe the club should be the first link or, or the second or third link it needs to be ranked in terms of importance if most of the revenue is being generated by the club then the club should be put first one and i'm guessing their best sellers are probably the shaving products and then everything that's related to body care and shower can be put as secondary but I would definitely lay out all the different collections when you land on the navigation and not have to click here. It's just a small thing, but out of the hundreds of thousands of people who will visit the website, this will make their life a bit easier. So I would definitely speed test this. Then let's have a look at collection pages. I'm gonna go with All Shave. The thing that shocked me the most in the collection page and in the product page, especially for a nine-figure brand, is that there is no social proof. There are no reviews, no ratings. And the thing is, maybe they are thinking, we don't need this, like we're famous enough, we have enough visibility on social medias. But the thing is, people want to know what other people are buying. They want to know what other people are saying about the products that they are buying. And this is something they're really missing on product pages and collection page. So I would definitely add this it's not even an A-B test I would run on their website, it's just a fundamental element that should be present at every stage of the website, in collection page, product page, and even in other parts. Then I would say that the tags are a bit limited, they just have member fave, and that's it. There is no other tags. Well, I guess there is this one. Back in stock, online exclusive. But I feel they could use best sellers, they could use what was it again? On exclusive, back in stock. I felt they could use new arrival, they could use best sellers because if I'm new to the brand, I will want to buy products that other people are buying because I know that other people have vetted the product for me. And so that's something I would definitely speed test, even if it's just best sellers. And then Tags are meant to basically differentiate products from each other and help navigation through the PLP. So definitely something to be speed tested. Another thing that I fear here is lacking is sort and filter options. As you can see, there is no filters, there is no sorting. What's good though is that we can see the different collection from there. This is helping a lot for quick navigations, but I cannot sort by, by price. I can sort by best sellers. And this is pretty annoying. So I would say that the filter is done with all the collections here, but there's no sorting options. And this is, yeah, as I said, a bit annoying. Now let's have a look at the product page. And again, just like I said, there's no social proof. And I think they would highly benefit from social proof just so that their customers can see what other people are saying about it. Uh, there is no saving badge. This is for the price so as you can see this is supposed to be $25 now it's $8 you don't want people to make the calculation in their mind even just saying 30% off is not really the best what you want to do and this is something that I've speed tested a few times is just add a small badge next to it and just say here for example you can have a badge and say save $17 this is a lot more impactful than just saying $8 instead of $25 it's actually showing you how much you're saving per product so it's a very small A-B test, but I would definitely speed test this on this website. Then we have the add to cart that is sub small. Why is this that small? Like I, I haven't seen any other nine figure brands that have small add to cart button like this. This should be full width and maybe a bit bigger. What's good though is that the color is really standing out compared to the rest. So there is no color blindness, which is something that is very important for uh, the add card button, especially on the product page. But yeah, look here, as you can see, we don't see entirely the CTA when I scroll back up. If, like I said, we would make the header slightly more optimized, then we would see the CTA on, on the above default. After that, unclear subscription option, yeah, here. So we have the add card, which is a CTA. But then if, I, if you scroll down, you see change, delay, or cancel your referrals at any time, edit, pause, or cancel any time. So this is a subscription, but I don't understand anywhere that this is a subscription, especially because I'm seeing new member starter pack. So I, I feel that the, 
the brand is not communicating well enough the way it's functioning. So if they're not doing a good job on the education phase before people land on the website and you just land on the website, you might be very confused. The next thing is if you look at the product page, there's no FAQ and this is a big mistake. On the collection page, they have an FAQ, but the FAQ is really centered about questions about shaving. It's not really centered about the the brand in itself. It's not talking about how fast uh, products are delivered, how the subscription option is, is working, etc. And I feel that they would benefit a lot from having a clear FAQ on the product page because obviously that's going to be on all products. And, uh, and I would use customer feedback surveys, uh, post-purchase surveys or in emails just to understand better what matters most to their customers and basically address and answer those questions directly in the FAQ. So I think that's it for the product page. Um, there will still be a lot of things to say, but um, I think it's actually good that they are contrasting pretty well an image text, an image text, and there is good hierarchy. We have always the title, the text, and then the image. Um, if we would look at the copywriting, I think it could be improved a little bit. But yeah, let's keep that for now because I think the main things here are really, as I said, social proof, saving badge, uh, a big add to cart button, FAQ, and bringing more clarity on the subscription. Um, this is good though, like they're using infographics, transparent hydrating, synthetic fragrance free. Now let's have a look at their cart. I'm just gonna add to cart this product. Something I found a bit weird about the cart is that there is a slide cart and there is a cart. So I don't understand why they're using the two. Like, is there a practical reason why they're doing this? Because if people add product to cart, they might open up the slide cart and then later on they will click on the cart and it will open up this uh, this traditional cart. I'm wondering, is this intentional or they they just didn't realize that the slide cart is not opening at any time? So a speed test I would run if I were to run Sierra for Dollar Shave Club is basically having two teams and I would have the slide cart turned on on one team and slide cart turned off on the first team. I would see basically which one is converting best. Then if I were to optimize just uh, this cart, I would change the hierarchy. Like you need to see the products first. You need to understand for clarity and for transparency what's in the cart before you click on checkout. That's why on most checkouts, uh, on most carts, you see the checkout button at the bottom. Um, and then, okay, we're seeing the order summary here. So I guess this, feels more like a quick checkout button. And here, another test that I would do is basically get rid of ShopPay and Google Pay, except if a decent part of their of their customers are using it, but I would maybe get rid of them. Just keep one CTA so that everything is, is very well streamlined and, um, and see which one converts best. So yeah, that's it for this quick audit of the Lochet Club website. I hope you liked it and uh, see you in the next one.